Welcome back to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, as always, Chris Brown. Today we have, I, I'm actually going to say this, our youngest guest on the show ever in our history. And yeah, you, you kind of were taken back there, <laughs> Isaiah. Um, Isaiah yeah. Nolasco is a political watcher. He is a supporter of the People's Party of Canada, as you can tell by his background if you're watching this via YouTube. Um, Isaiah, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. So I, I guess let's get the big question right out of the way here, Isaiah. And that is, how did you get involved in politics? Um, I, I always had, um, I guess I always had a love for politics and um, numbers and all that. And I remember watching my first election, I think, which was a 2015 one. And I just love seeing all the numbers on the screen pop up with all the colors and all of that. I'm like, oh, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Right. Um, and, I, and I had an interest in it ever since. And then I started looking into parties and like, oh, well, it's pretty cool because um, people are electing their representatives and um, they get to represent them, of course. Right. So pretty cool. What about politics uh, kind of drew you to it? Because I, I remember my first uh, election in 1993. I feel very old talking to you right now, but I remember my first election. And like you, I remember watching all the numbers come in, all the seat distributions. What about it kept you involved? Because election night and politics are a two different beasts in itself. So what about politics kept you coming back? Just reading the news, wanting to, uh, of course, make a change for everyone. Um, that's usually what all politicians want. Um, and it's just, it's it's kind of been a hobby of mine. Uh, and I feel like I'm going to make it um, to to that level eventually someday. So, yeah. So it's, you are a, I would say, a prominent supporter of Maxime Bernier's People's Party of Canada, as in the brochures that I see in the background. What about the PPC interested you and why did you get involved? Or was that the first party that you sort of flirted with before getting fully involved in politics? Was it something else before the People's Party? Yes, actually. Um, and a lot of people might find this hilarious, but I actually was a supporter of the Liberals. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know. I think I just did not like Stephen Harper. Uh, just... This was before I really, really, really knew politics. Um, I just, I guess I kind of had something against him because uh, he was the only prime minister I actually lived to like see, right? So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll support Trudeau because he's the only one who seems like could actually become the next prime minister, right? Because I was kind of bored of hearing the same things in school, right? So it wasn't really the the platform that I supported, but it was just uh, kind of like a direct democracy situation where um, I like Trudeau because he was he probably, was not Harper. <laughs> he was not Harper, right? Yeah, and I didn't even know uh, back then that Mulcair was um, the opposition leader. So things have uh, I've learned a lot of things, and things have certainly changed. Now. Anyone who remembers that, that 2015 general election, Stephen Harper lost, Justin Trudeau went from third place to first place. Um, Stephen Harper announced that he was not going to seek the leader or he was not going to continue on as leader of the Conservative Party. When did you make the switch? Was it after learning a little bit about the leadership race for the Conservatives? Was it a certain issue in the that after that election that sort of got you away from the Liberal Party? The exact day that <laughs> the exact day the party was created, the People's Party was created. Uh, I just I remember. I believe this is. I was at my grandparents' house and I was bored as always. You know, the, um, my grandparents uh, kind of live in a small house and all that, so I didn't have much to do. I was young and I remember watching TV and watching the news and seeing the guy that. Um, my parents supported um, create a new party, and uh, because he, my parents had supported him in the um, conservative election uh, leadership race, right? So I saw him, and I was like, "Yeah, this this seems pretty cool, right? Maybe I'll go for him now." Now at this point, I still really I, I knew very little about 
their uh, policies and all that because they were very new and all that. I kind of just like the leader. So I'm like, okay, cool. Um, and not until probably three days after the 2019 election was called, um, I actually read the policies and I was like, ticks all of my boxes, literally every single one. And so um, what were those boxes? What were those boxes that drew you to the people's party? Yeah. Um, so for, for me, it was, um, it was probably the getting rid of a lot of red tape, um, the immigration policies, our, um, view on the UN and, uh, yeah. And now, especially with the uh, new pandemic things gave us a lot of support and gave me a lot of passion for the party. Now, let, let's just change it up a little bit here because I want to get to know who Isaiah is. Because yeah. I remember my, uh, I, I'm not sure, how, how old are you? You're 15? 14. 14. Yeah. I remember being a 14-year-old kid and I remember doing the exact same thing that you have done. And as you can tell, I'm now not 14 years old and I still have a passion for politics. How does a 14-year-old kid enjoy politics so much? Because I, I can imagine you were not having this conversation with your schoolmates at school during uh, the 2015, 2019, 2021 general elections. I, uh, yeah, so 2015, I remember going to school the next day. And of course, it was the biggest thing. Like, oh, yeah, we, we got a new prime minister. But well, no one really knew anything. I didn't know anything. I just knew that someone else was going to be our kind of leader and all that. Like we would have a picture of him on the wall now instead of seeing Stephen Harper's face. Right. So it was, um, it was a change, right? People didn't know it all. Um, and then 2019 comes, um, I was very, very active, not as active as the 2021 election, but I was pretty active. I went to, um, rallies and all that. I, I was still kind of young and that's kind of when I picked up the knowledge about the party and I remember the next day at school a um, bunch of kids were like making fun of me because oh yeah your party sucks blah, blah blah you know they didn't they only got this amount of votes and I just took it as a joke because they were just joking around right so um but yeah uh, we weren't having those conversations not until the 2021 election where I started uh, campaigning going door to door door knocking, going to six PPC rallies, uh, even traveled down to BC just to see him. And um, I did a lot of door knocking, like I said. Um, I did another interview. I've been... Why do you think it's important for youth to get involved in politics? Because you're kind of a political oddity here because there's not that many 14-year-olds who are thinking, or even, let's say, 12-year-olds at that time in 2019 when that 2019 election happening happened, who are thinking to themselves, I, I want to get involved in politics. Why do you believe, the youth who are listening to this, it's important for them to get involved and look for a party that represents them? Um, well, it's simple because it's um, you're electing your future and um, it's it, it very well is going to affect the history of the country and the history of the world um, as well, because one one thing can happen in another country and it's the way that your country responds to it, um, which has an impact on the world stage as well. So I think. Uh, you very well could have a say in what happens by voting for the person that um, you feel best represents your values and your country. You uh, have a big future ahead of you in the party and I'm assuming in politics in general. What's the next step? Because you are only 14 right now. You cannot vote for another four years until you're 18. Um, yeah. You're still going to be active, I'm assuming. What steps would you like to see in place for youth to get more involved? Because some people have said you should lower the voting age to 16 to let more people vote. Because as, as a 16-year-old, you can drive. So therefore, you should be able to vote. What things do you believe the CANDA needs to do to help more youth get involved and engaged in politics? I think uh, where it is now, it's 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 fairly easy. Um, I, I know uh, at the age of fourteen, you can buy 
membership to a party, which I believe is the legal age for all parties in Canada. I, I have a membership with the People's Party and um, uh, and I can now vote on board meetings and all that. And even the director of at large of the Calgary South region. And I'm only 14, right? Which is huge. So I feel um, Canada has done a good job at uh, making sure everybody has um, a say in everything, um, no matter what age. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think my, I have a bright future ahead of me. And um, I'm very hopeful that other other youth will join. How do you do that? Uh, I know we in our pre-interview of go, emailing back and forth before this interview started, um, you talked about you were trying to set up a youth wing of the People's Party of Canada. How's the traction been for that? Are you getting support from the leader, Maxime Bernier, uh, who has been on the show? If you haven't listened to that interview, go back and listen to it. It was in season two. But how is the traction been to get a youth wing of the party started? So as of now, there there still is no youth wing. Um, and Do you have hope of, that there will be one? Sometime, probably very far from now, yes. Um, as of now, due to circumstances on in the national stage and uh, everywhere, pretty much, we, we cannot look at that um, because, uh, like I said, we have other priorities and Right now, our um, main focus is to get more memberships. And once we get more memberships um, in our district, in our writing associations, and ultimately in Canada, we'll be able to look at that again and uh, kind of revisit it and remodel the, the youth wing, right? So, but we are, we are, it's still in the back of our heads at whenever we bring it up at um, board meetings. You you attended a few rallies. Have you had the chance to speak with uh, the leader, Maxime Bernier? Yeah, yeah, um, two or three times. Um, I remember one time, the very first time I met him, I was, um, you know, doing my hair in the washroom. I went to the washroom, doing my hair and all that. And he walks in with this nice French accent. And I'm like, whoa, what the heck? That's Maxime Bernier. He's literally right there. And I was just taken away, taken away because I was like, this is, I did not expect that. I just came in to look good for the rally and all that. Right. Um, after that, we, we did talk. Um, this was back in 2019, of course. Uh, I just said how I really admired his um, policies and all that. Got to speak to a couple of candidates. And of course, when we went to BC, I asked him a couple of questions like, where do you plan on running next? Um, like, where do you think we'll kind of be? uh on the national uh popular vote stage and all that um he he did answer <laughs> uh so that's good um where where do you see the party going because you are active member of the party uh 2021 was not you did uh, the party did well it grew in support you got more votes than you did in 2019 but where would you hope the party goes from here? I know the obvious answer you're going to say is win a seat, so you're back in the House of Commons. But what's the steps that the party needs to take, in your opinion, to potentially go forward and get some of the disgruntled conservative voters and potentially other voters to come over to the PPC? So as populists, we got votes from pretty much all over the parties, right? So... What I'm very hopeful uh, for and what I am thinking of is um, there's two things. Number one is um, the Greens won their first seat by a floor cross, I believe. And I believe um, we could get a floor cross that could happen, right? So I think it's very, very possible. Um, and once that happens, I'm pretty sure we'll get a lot more attention on the graphics for when it comes to election time and we'll be able to participate in debates. I'm pretty sure we might be able to participate in the debate um, in this next debate. But the next thing I'm hopeful for is um, there's um, a, a writing in Candace Bergen's writing. Um, I don't wanna say the writing name because I don't know how to pronounce it, 
but the MP is Kenneth Bergen. And right now the PPC is at 25% in that riding. Uh, we won 21% in this last election. And I believe if, uh, if we could, if we could um, get that going up, we could win that seat. And we pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite by becoming a backer of the show. With a quick visit to patreon.com and searching cross border interviews, you can help continue this show. For as little as $3 a month, your support can ensure we grow and bring new and exciting things to our growing listenership. Click the link in the show notes and back the show today. I just I'm just trying to f- figure out what the right name of the writing is because now you've got me wondering or oh uh, yeah I'm not going to try to pronounce that either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say Portage Lissage, but I guarantee I just butchered that name so badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so seeing those, seeing the numbers, that 25 percent in that last election, some might think, hey, it was a weird election because it was fought on COVID nineteen. Hopefully we do, we are not in COVID-19 in a few months from now or even a week from now, but who knows with the governments that we currently have in place. Do you think that the, the vote that the, uh, the party captured in the 2021 election will continue to be there in the next election and grow? And how are you, you the, uh, the sort of at-large director for the Calgary South PPC party, helping engage with voters across this province and across your riding? Yeah, so um, to answer the first question, I, I believe so that I do, I'm very confident um, and hopeful that we will continue to grow. Um, I think we'll maintain that um, 4%, 5% mark. And I think my, my ultimate hope is that we become kind of like the next reform party um, because you mentioned 1993 <laughs> it was your first election We're like oh yeah that was a, that was a pretty weird election wasn't it right um so that's ultimately what i'm hoping for uh, 1993 um and um which it could right because all it takes is one seat to win the deborah gray won in uh, a 1988 by election which uh, brought the reform party into relevance so all it needs is one it takes one stone to start a wave and Maybe hopefully one, I know there's no by-election coming up federally, but who knows? Yeah, and, and uh, just some one quick thing I'm throwing is that um, the riding that 25% wasn't even Maxine Bernier's riding. So uh, possibly maybe if we put him in that riding, he could win because, uh, I mean, of course, name recognition is key. Maybe they vote for the candidate because they knew him personally. But just saying maybe if we put Maxine Bernier in that riding, he could improve the amount of votes that go up. Uh, but to answer the second question, I'm doing everything I can by uh, providing my, I talked to my candidate a lot, um, or former candidate, we are, we're trying to reelect him. But um, uh, who was the candidate in Calgary South? Uh, in, in Calgary, Minipore, our candidate was... Minipore, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> our candidate was Jonathan Hegel. Um, that was his name. And uh, really, really, really cool guy. So I, I'm helping by asking him for... Um, every time we have a freedom rally or something, um, we usually ask for some signs um, that just say PPC on them because those were his lawn signs, actually. They didn't have his name because he just wanted to get the name of the party out there as opposed to the name, right? Yeah. Uh, so they just say PPC, and I bring those freedom rallies in bulk, and I'll distribute. Well, I'll give to my friends so you can distribute them out, and um, we're getting people involved um, by getting more memberships. And yeah, it's 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 a so, pretty cool journey. I want to turn to a different subject now, and this is away from you and more about politics in general. I want to know from you, from a 14-year-old who is active in uh, the PPC, what's your thoughts on politics today? Um, I think, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all over the place. Uh, How do you think Justin Trudeau is doing? Not, not the best. You know, uh, um, honestly, 
I didn't think he was doing horrible, horrible, horrible up until he called, I think, a bunch of unvaccinated people like misogynists and all that. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's that's probably the part where I, that's kind of like the a straw. Step too far? Yeah, a little, yeah, a little step too far, right? So that's kind of what got me. And that this was pretty recent too, so um, yeah. But before that, I thought Trudeau was just doing what he his party pretty much pressured him into doing. Um, and he also, his writing is also in a very, very, very um, left-wing, I guess, uh, area, population, whatever, right? So- Papineau the- is quite uh, progressive and I think it's only elected Bloc Quebecois or potentially conservative in 84, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. But yes, it is a very safe liberal seat, if you ask me. <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's. Uh, I mean, now I think politics is just... Uh, Do you think youth are getting turned off of politics because of how divisive it is right now with the sort of the name calling that we are seeing, with Justin Trudeau calling people misogynist for not getting vaccinated, with Aaron O'Toole saying whatever Aaron O'Toole has said, because I'm pretty sure I'm not sure where he has been for the last six months, but that's that's here nor there. Do you think youth are getting turned away from politics? Um, no, I actually, I would actually argue that they're getting more into, um, into it as it kind of builds up, like all this name calling and all that, right? Builds up suspense. And I've noticed that a lot more political discussions have been happening just because it of course is becoming divisive. And people are being protective over their beliefs, right? So I believe that the youth are actually trending towards that area. Um, The more and more people I talk to and speak to have more of an open mind to politics. Because before it was just some taboo subject. Um, But now it's even more taboo that people can't even ignore it. It's it's gotten that bad where... um, someone will say something and someone will automatically fire back really, really quick, right? So I think- Do you think that hurts our society as someone who's looking to get into politics as a, 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 in the future, uh, like as an elected politician, I should say? I, I, I know from my perspective, you have to be careful what you say online or even in interviews like this because someone could take it out of context and they could accuse you of something. And that's why prior to this interview, I asked your mother if it was okay for us to record this because I just want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence. Do you find that youth today and your friends, even yourself, and I say youth today, I feel like I'm so old right now, man. God, <laughs> do you find that people, you uh, kids your age and your friends and uh, even Threat, uh, family are more hesitant to say things that they weren't it, like five years ago. 100%. Um, because that's, that's usually, at least from what I've seen, that's all that happens whenever we're catching up with a friend that we haven't seen in a while, where it's like, yeah, well, you know, things have been weird lately um, in Canada, whatever, right? Um, and it'll kind of feed on to a conversation or even just a family gathering where people will have their own opinions and bring that out. Um, yeah, I think I think it's it's become more of a talk subject. We pride ourselves on going beyond that 15 second soundbite. Be sure to hit that subscribe button today to be kept in the loop of all the great episodes that are coming up on the show. Also, click on the links in the show notes and follow our social media pages as well. I want to ask, I'm going to ask this in a weird way, but please bear with me while I ask it. I refuse to do things that my parents used to tell me to do. I, If my parents said vote this way, I'd vote the other way. If they told me to do this, I would do something else. You're kind of a different uh, gem in that situation because your parents supported Maxime Bernier and the conservative leadership in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, if I can do math here correctly. And then 
they joined the PPC, I'm assuming as well. Are you like, were you, and I don't want to, how do I ask this correctly? Are you doing this because your parents are doing it or are you active in the PPC because you actually believe in what the party stands for? Yeah, that's actually a really good question because another thing that I really, really, really want to do as a politician is to help kids and youth make their minds and decisions on their own as opposed to having that influence. Um, I originally, I had um, seen the party and I was telling my mom all the options. Um, I think uh, I think that day specifically, snow got I mean school got snowed out right so we kind of just sat in this room and watched CPAC and saw all the leaders speak and I went online looked at the PVC platform and I'm like mom this this looks like a pretty cool platform you know you should look into it right and she's like yeah but vote splitting of course right it's it's you know that's probably the thing that a lot of PPC supporters hear a lot of the time and it's it wasn't you know, now it's not too new. Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, battery's low, but yeah. Um, yeah, but I actually, it took a while to get my parents involved. And um, so even, you brought your parents to politics and not them the other way around? Like they didn't bring you to politics, you brought them to politics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it sounds weird, but I've been forcing, I've been dragging my parents. I even dragged them to that time in BC. Uh, to see Maxine Bernie, but I I've been dragging my parents to go to rallies. I've been dragging my parents to um, like do things that usually it's like oh you know this is kind of a bit too much. But I'm like yeah I mean it, I want to kind of be more prepared for my future, and I think by um, doing this I'm benefiting myself in the long term. So I think I think it's gonna be uh, a good. Um, fight down the road for me and yeah to answer your question I did pretty much suck my parents into doing all this politics stuff <laughs> I, I am gonna start my wrap up here and I want to ask this question talk to the youth of Canada right now the ones that are listening and have heard this uh the show so far what would you want them to know and why should they get involved in politics in your opinion and because I think we we can talk about how, why you got in politics what you're doing in politics but you got to make a change. So why should youth today get involved in your statement? Speak directly to them right now. You have, yeah. I've, I've, I've given you the, like the two minute platform to sort of pitch your political future for us. Yeah. So why yeah. should, why should youth get involved? Yeah, perfect. Um, youth should get involved because it's very important for the future. It is very, it is a huge um, step in, great direction for you um you're becoming more independent and you get to make decisions on your own and i i believe that it's it's a very 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 um good thing because you know you're helping create a new environment for canada or keep it if that's the way you'd like but um it, it's your choice that's how democracy works and um you should be able to exercise your right to vote freely so I think. Uh, awesome. Um, yeah. And my, my last question for you is this. Now, now flip it on the tip. If you could speak to the leaders of our parties today, Aaron O'Toole, Justin Trudeau, Jagmeet Singh, Yves-Francois Blanchet, Amita Kuttner, and Maxime Bernier, what would you tell them about the youth of today and why should they be worried, why they, why they should be focusing on the youth of today? Um. I think because the youth, and this is probably a very generic thing to say, but the youth is the future. And uh, by, you know, in a way it's kind of like, you do this for the youth, maybe they'll elect you in the future because in the future they'll be able to vote, right? So uh, that's, that's one thing, but um, I think they should be paying attention because um, in polls and all that, um, they usually get the they usually get the feedback from parents and uh people over the age of 18 or 18 right so i think it's very important that we listen to what all citizens have to say um as opposed to kind of just um 
the people who, you know, for example, if you put a statistic saying, or ran a poll saying, um, do you like bacon or something like that? And you asked a uh, hundred people, um, but only those hundred people that voted were over the age of 18. That would not represent the, the, the large sample of it because um, maybe there are some youth who are allergic to bacon or hate bacon, right? So th things like that, right? So I think we need to um, kind of bring um, the youth back into um, giving feedback and all that. I think, I think they're, they're doing an okay job right now by putting polls in schools, um, like how is your school year doing or whatever, right? I think if we do that, um, maybe once every semester, that'd be good, but yeah. Well, um, I want to thank you, Isaiah, because I think you have a bright future ahead of you. And I, I remember being a 14 year old kid and just remembering that uh, I, it felt daunting that like I was speaking to all these politicians at 14 years old and when I was uh, doing my run around and having posters like you do on my wall and just trying to aspire to be them. But if the youth of today are like you, I don't have any worry about the future because we are going to be engaged, we're going to be eloquent, and we're going to be very uh, sincere about what the future of our country. So I do appreciate you taking time and being involved because we need the youth to do that. 100%. Yeah. Um, I, I do want to say, and just to recap here, thank you so much for reaching out. I always love when I have these conversations with people because it's always great to have conversations with average Canadians, just Canadians and have a conversation that's not on Twitter. That's not name calling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, I have a Twitter account. Um, that's where I got most of my, uh, recognition i even had someone come up to me like you're the famous twitter kid I'm like oh what <laughs> like i don't know you <laughs> but thanks um uh yeah twitter is a pretty hostile place i'll say especially for a 14 year old who likes politics uh so it, it's it's very hostile but it's really really good to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with again just a canadian right so yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I do want to thank you for reaching out. Uh, for any for everyone watching, thank you so much for tuning in to another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Uh, have yourself an excellent rest of the day. And remember, guys, keep talking because that's what makes democracy work is when we actually sit down and have a conversation between two people. Have yourself an excellent rest of the day, guys. Yeah.